Welcome back. Hope you've had a good lunch break. Uh, without further ado, what I'd like to do is to introduce us to our keynote for this afternoon, uh, Alex Nickel, uh, CEO and uh, founder of uh, BizView. And Alex is going to look at uh, how using lean principles can help to adapt, innovate and optimize uh, business operations. So, Alex, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jonathan. And uh, thank you, team. We've already just uh, use some lean principles to uh, 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 move, move this presentation uh, uh, onto a, a more simpler start. Um, good afternoon, Summit. Uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, uh, present to you again, uh, all but uh, not face to face this year. Last year, obviously, I was with my compatriot Dirk uh, 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 presenting to you all um, at Mercedes World, and uh, we were very privileged to do so. And I think uh, anybody who went there uh, would, would probably agree it was, it was a hell of a, uh, a, a session and, uh, and a great venue. So uh, it's a shame we can't be there this afternoon. However, uh, on a few of the slides I've got, I've got the, a bit of auto, automotive in there to, to, to remind us of what we had last year. Talking about reminding, I guess, you know, I wanted to start. Uh, um, I don't know if many people have seen uh, uh, David Silk's uh, presentation yesterday, another great keynote. Um, he mentioned about uh, some of the slides he presented, uh, uh, um, you know, almost 12 months ago now. And when I was asked to do this presentation around using lean instead of uh, uh, um, discussing why we needed things like lean for, for, for disruption purposes and how we spoke about things that we had done in the marketplace, um, well, I started by looking at last year's slides and started, started to look at uh, uh, some of the products that we had uh, exposed to clients since then uh, um, uh, and to see if we had uh, uh, pinned our colors to the mast and very much um, push out some of what we tried to preach to our customers. And for, for lots of reasons, uh, that is very true, we have. We have really underpinned lots of organizations wanting to uh, uh, um, you know, develop lean and digital uh, techniques and processes. I think uh, um, uh, it's fair to say that uh, uh, what's happened over the last six months was quite unexpected. Uh, uh, um, it, you know, I think uh, just by the by the showing of this event being digital and and how the the team at Botanic have moved uh, um, to a complete digital model for such a big summit shows that actually uh, uh, we can practice what we preach uh, uh, um, as suppliers uh, um, as as well as actually helping. Uh, um, our own clients and customers um, along this journey. So it's a shame we're not Mercedes World, but uh, 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 um, I would still like to pay um, thanks to Sheridan, Jonathan, the gang, to uh, 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 you know making this whole thing uh, still possible and uh, gi giving us uh, 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 a nice chance to case uh, 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 roll some of the things that we're doing now with uh, um, some customers that are both joint uh, and direct. Uh, and what we do with other partners as well. So um, I've got a few stories uh, um, to tell. I've got a, um, uh, uh, a few takeaways, a few giveaways, if you like, um, or, on, uh, or on how we can adapt, how we can innovate, and how we can optimize. I think it's fair to say, you know, uh, lean means different to to lots of different organizations, uh, where they use it, where they don't use it, why they use it, uh, um, uh, and what sort of tools uh, that they use. There's all sorts of uh, different tools out there. There's, there's Black Belt this, there's uh, 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 design thinking, um, and all sorts. There's lean startup tools. Um, you can build MVPs, you can do proof of concepts, you can do prototyping. But I think when it really comes down to it um, for all of us who that, that, that do what, use these uh, tools, it needs to be a pragmatic um, approach to using lean tools, uh, um, to being able to adapt more quickly um, um, and optimize your business where you can show value um, as quickly as possible. So, um, you know, uh, we're gonna go through why we should learn, uh, use lean tools, where we should use them, um, and um, how to start. Uh, uh, using some of these tools uh, uh, quickly. So 
first giveaway straight into value to give you something. Um, I was thinking about this uh, uh, um, over the last week or so, and uh, uh, um, I took a, uh, I built an analogy uh, uh, that we actually used with the client uh, uh, for a slightly different purpose, but it seems to me it fits quite well with the lean processes and why you should do lean, especially around things like customer um, experience. Um, let's, let's just take a, a look at a bus. Let's use that as a, as a model for uh, um, using things like lean in uh, customer experience. The truth of the matter is customers are now uh, uh, um, the judge. They decide whether they uh, um, are getting value from your from your organization. It doesn't matter if you sell products or services, uh, um, it's no longer an option uh, um, not, not to uh, uh, um, give excellence if that's where it's required. So actually, you know, uh, uh, and we take this bus model and if we apply that to our customer processes, we start saying, okay, does our customer have any control um, about the bus? Do they have any control on its maintenance regime? Do they have any control on its route? Do they have any control um, on, on the seats with inside? Um, and so forth and so forth. Uh, um, the truth matter is the only control they really have uh, with you guys is decide to whether get on the bus or not. So actually, when we start looking at our customer experience processes, if they don't like the look of the bus, they don't like the route it's going on, or they don't like how often it's maintained, or it doesn't stop at the right places, they will let you know and they will vote. You will become uh, um, very transferable um, and they will move away to other organizations. So actually, the reason now we need to really start looking at things like Lean is to be able to be more agile, to be more flexible, to test, to validate and verify new processes and, uh, and see what wins and pivot very quickly to be able to do that. We've got many organizations, some of which I'll be talking about this afternoon, where we have done this. So whether the bus analogy works for your organization or not, one of the giveaways and takeaways from this we would like you to see and do is actually think of an analogy that does work for your organization, that does emphasize some of the things that you would like to do with your organization so you can put yourself in the customer shoes. We've heard a lot about customer mapping, journey mapping, standing in the shoes of the customer, uh, uh, the voice of the customer, but I think you need to actually start building and understanding the customer yourself. The, the ease that your customer finds about getting a competitor is the basic premise of how well positioned you are, how well you can evolve things and how quickly you can evolve things to make sure that you're delivering the sorts of value you want. And if you're looking at offering uh, um, services with premium prices, whether it's a, a, a digital service or a product, you need to make sure that you can continuously learn. We heard from Amy this morning a couple of things that I took from Amy's keynote speech. Uh, the first thing was uh, about communication, was about standard terms, making sure that we all understand uh, uh, um, and we were reading from the same page and, uh, and the same book. That is absolutely key. But the other thing was about continuous improvement and learning. We need to do this. This isn't a destination. This is a continuous approach that we need to do. We will never get there anymore. And there's some there's some good thought leadership now about uh, um, how we how we use lean to outthink and outlearn our competitors. So again, I think that's uh, um, uh, something key that we can look at. So uh, um, using an, an analogy uh, um, and embedding it into your organization will help you. It, it will help you uh, um, evolve. It will help you create a playbook and explain to different parts of the business why you need to do something. Why is a big question. Agile, uh, uh, again, you know, what is the why? Let's start with the why. We'll move on to the what uh, um, and uh, end up with the how. The how can be frustrating. People like to go to the how because the how is where all the sexy technology is, but actually understanding the why, the big problems, the business challenges, and what we may want to do quickly is, is absolutely key. One of the things that we did, and you, you probably heard uh, anyone who's watched a number of these uh, uh, um, uh, presentations so far was, was Neil Whitaker uh, on Sunspot. You know, they had a big why. Their customers uh, 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 um, were moving away because of COVID and they were no longer buying uh, 
uh, uh, uh, um, holidays and they had other whys and it dawned on them that actually they needed to do something different very, very quickly, whether it be onboarding chatbots, whether it be using WhatsApp, uh, uh, um, whether it be uh, um, tying uh, um, interactions and using automation to be able to pump out information to their agents very quickly. So the why is forever changing. Uh, um, it is different for everybody. Uh, um, uh, how do you do? How do you want to do business? Um, what is your uh, uh, position? How does it affect your position? Um, you know, telcos used to take eighteen uh, to twenty months to expose a new product because that product wasn't just the customer experience. Uh, um, um, it's quite frustrating, um, as a, uh, one of the guys at. Uh, um, uh, O2 and Telefonica told us, he said, because we released this new product that took, took, took us 18 months and it was something like free text messages, 60 minutes and X, Y, Z. And he said, within two weeks, another telco had released a new product and service and it took them so long. And uh, uh, they were some of the trailblazers in uh, uh, um, product releasing, um, onboarding of new products and services and all the things that were connected and linked all the way from uh, uh, running lean uh, processes. So you need to find out your why and understand in the tele, obviously in the, in, in the mobile operating space, their why was they needed to have the offer. The, you know, uh, uh, um, the reason they found out so quickly was from their customers, their customers were leaving them. So they used something which is the fundamental essence of intelligence, it's, uh, 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 um, it's pattern matching. So they quickly looked at the patterns and started to understand every single time one of their competitors had released a new product offering, they would get people uh, uh, leaving them to go to a bundle that had uh, unlimited text and unlimited uh, voice and so forth. So we need to understand our why and how we do business and how we will operate in the future. And then map some of those business challenges end to end, understand how they relate to each other. Um, another takeaway is with that in mind, um, uh, how do you, how, how do you productize? How do you systemize things quite quickly? How do you find out, uh, 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 um, what will work and what won't work and how do you then test that? Well, we, we're currently working with a, a major national and in fact now global, um, gym that actually had to, uh, uh, um, have 500 gyms opened with a week's notice after COVID. And one of the things they wanted to do uh, with still, you know, half their workforce on on, on furlough and other schemes, um, they wanted to be able to uh, reduce that time and that effectiveness and efficiency of those customer interactions. So they came to us, a long term client, and they said, can we set up a lean way, a lean test to really quickly, how can we reduce that time? And one of the things that they actually came up with, because what we do, we don't tend or pretend to uh, uh, know people's businesses better than them. So we work up very quickly, we, we facilitate and we pull out all the business challenges and business issues. And then we categorize these very quickly and we look at uh, um, hypothesis and solution candidates going forward. And what we did from that was say, okay, uh, uh, um, what we need is something that we can plot it, uh, um, quickly uh, uh, um, pick up. Um, a bit like an F1 team when they're changing the front of a uh, um, car, we need to be able to pick this up and shove it onto different uh, uh, um, uh, channels and, and pretty quickly. So that's what we did. And that happened to be for them IDMV. So we created an automated approach for IDMV um, across all their textual digital channels. Um, and we've started exposing and releasing that quickly now. So, you know, uh, um, the amount of time and the process uh, uh, um, for pushing stuff um, into their mitral contact center has been vastly um, optimized. Again, this this uh, uh, um, this was a, a, a great project. It went really quickly and really enjoyed uh, the fact that they were able to make those decisions. Um, decision making is is a is something that leaders actually do. Uh, um, they probably uh, need more help in doing it. They probably need to come up with some sort of pro forma on how to make business decisions. Uh, um, I read recently a, a, a great article about 1,300 most successful uh, um, uh, uh, business uh, leaders that make decisions in the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial and expert uh, um, sectors. Um, every 99%, it, 
out of that 1340 or 1360 people surveyed, only six people said that they would make no decision. They all made a decision, but what they had in the background was the ability to make uh, a, um, a secondary decision mapped out, ready to go. So actually they're making the first decision wasn't difficult because they knew uh, uh, what success looked like from having a backup. So again, another takeaway there, let's productize things, whether it is decision-making uh, um, or whether it's just something uh, uh, and they would want to do. So they, 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 they you, we also use things called, you know when, and uh, we took them through. So you know when uh, you want to change something quickly. You know when your content contact center is being flooded by uh, and customers coming through. How do I how do I do something? So we went through all these and we started mapping them out. This took this took a, a all, all all but a day uh, um, to, to deliver. And then we spent uh, um, a bit more time uh, running up the prototype to see what it could look like. And then obviously when it was successful and the hypothesis was proved and validated or the next candidate was moved on to, then we start moving on to productizing. So adapting, innovating and optimizing when you have got some of these tools in the background is a lot easier. It makes it more comfortable for people to step off that. And we sort of asked some of these questions. Um, when was the last time that you actually stepped on a, uh, uh, you stood on a stone, you stepped out into the unknown? Um, it's very few times that actually organizations do it. And I think actually, uh, um, I don't know what the percentages are, but if you were probably to look at what's happened in the last six months due to COVID, um, I'm pretty sure we have, we have probably uh, uh, moved six years in digital transformation with most organizations wanting to do something. And I know from our side, we've had probably more clients wanting to do projects uh, um, in the last three to six months than we probably had in the, in the four to five years before that. So definitely, you know, uh, uh, these things need to be adjusted. I don't think you need any one uh, um, uh, um, methodology. I think actually building something up that works for you uh, uh, um, is also a good thing to do. I think um, the other thing that needs to happen uh, uh, um, is understand how your business uh, uh, um, operates. Um, understand uh, uh, um, how the values, the purpose, um, and there may be more than one purpose, there might be multiple purposes, and there might be multiple missions, but how that all impacts with your vision. We go through this quite a lot with clients, making sure that something that we build uh, in a very quick way still maps the organization's um, values and uh, uh, um, make sure that that is articulated before we get on to the, the, uh, uh, the, the how, the technology part of it. And um, I think, uh, you know, this is just something actually we built up on the right hand side, uh, um, you know, to take people through it. You know, the vision and values, these are the, the, the tangible, these are your beliefs, these things don't change. These values should always be with your organization. Uh, this is what makes you, you guys, you. Um, your purpose, you know, is the reason you exist. So if that is just a, a, um, a line of business, that is what you're there to do. Um, so uh, um, that should all link into these missions or multiple missions on uh, what you're trying to achieve uh, uh, um, with your customer and your client. And when you do things that are lean, you need to make sure that these, are, the, these aren't broken. Uh, um, we hate things like silos. I'll get onto that a little bit more. Probably have a rant about that a bit later on. Uh, um, uh, but actually, we do need to make sure that certain things that make you special uh, understood. Uh, I think Jonathan mentioned in his first, uh, uh, in one of the first um, presentations about uh, people and where they fit in. Um, technology uh, uh, um, and innovation uh, um, isn't uh, uh, isn't everything. Some of this can be around culture. Some of this can be some of the things that um, your organization can do. Sometimes when we look at the frameworks with people and how we prototype rapidly within a day, um, understand all these things, some of those prototype bits will be manual. They will be understanding stuff. They might be using PowerPoint to see if what we've developed will work. Uh, um, but actually doing nothing is, 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 is something we just can't consider. We just need to consider it within a within our overall framework so we don't break things. Um, we also look at uh, um, things within here on, on why we're doing stuff uh, uh, um, with those. So is this a, is it a, a, a hobby? Are you acting like a hobby in how you operate with your clients and customers? Um, or is it a job? 
Uh, if it's a job, obviously that's quite good. It means you're making money out of it. A hobby normally costs you money. Uh, um, so uh, we try to work up with the uh, organizations. So we turn it into something that's an enterprise. So your customer experience is actually adding value. It's not just doing something uh, um, from a point of view of a job or actually losing money, which could be a hobby. It's actually providing additional value. Um, so, you know, uh, um, is this, this, this improves uh, employee experience in, uh, and why and why they're getting involved um, um, as well to see how they benefit and what value they add we had some we've had some lovely quotes back more recently uh, from customer experience agents actually saying I'm actually doing what I was hired to do and uh, you know this goes back two or three years now for us um, we've had this quite a few times from different organizations but saying I'm now doing something that I was meant to do I'm not just on a call uh, or in a chat uh, uh, with people uh, uh, moaning at me. So I think actually, um, you know, lots can be derived from actually business alignment when, when doing things like lean. Another, another uh, uh, takeaway I want to uh, give people, and this doesn't have to be, and please don't say, see this as a silo. Uh, uh, this is more about um, an approach. Um, Having just said that everything is related, I think what we need to understand uh, um, uh, um, that actually there does need to be some thinking. And we, we like to do it in these simple terms. It's about getting the right solution before we go into the doing, which is getting the solution right. Okay, it's quite simple. It's a design thinking concept that we take all the way through. So when we start looking at thinking, we start looking, we start looking at, uh, uh, um, uh, what is the problem we're trying to solve? Um, and what, 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 you know, could I do? What should I, should I do? What will I do? And we, we use this uh, um, to grab all things. So we don't start spending time uh, um, and money on something uh, uh, um, that won't solve that problem. The doing is more about the how. It's the productization of some of that prototyping. Uh, um, whereas we see the thinking much more around that strategy, around that roadmap uh, uh, and so forth, you know, in a very quick way. Um, it's also about allowing you to create internal uh, uh, um, capital to be able to do the next thing. So if we do some thinking, it may take a day and we might capture loads and loads of uh, uh, um, issues, business challenges and so forth, and the inspiration to do something. Once we have done that, it's about then uh, um, solutionizing uh, um, and looking at some of these and then categorizing and putting these things into some sort of priority order and then prototyping it. That's all the way uh, to the finishing off a, a, a design sprint, which might take a day and the thinking might take a day. The actual doing could even be a separate partner. Uh, um, it could be a separate uh, a techno tech 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 technology stack, um, but let's not get you know hook up, hooked up um, on, on the doing. Okay, so thinking v doing. Uh, um, is something that uh, uh, um, we very much push quite hard. We also push quite hard that actually, um, after saying expertise and intelligence uh, is basically pattern matching, uh, uh, um, and uh, pattern matching is used to understand how how intelligent kids are at a very young age, but even before they can speak, um, that's why they have these cards that you can show two, three cards, two of which are frogs and one's a goat. And, they, uh, and kids do, uh, they always point out the one that's, that's different. Uh, it's reverse pattern matching, but you know, uh, all in all, it's still pattern matching. And it, and it shows off uh, um, intelligence. We use that uh, pattern matching. Uh, we go to lots of organizations and we look at some of the things that are going wrong. I, I honestly believe the majority of organizations I, I could go into now and understand where they're having issues, whether it be uh, uh, um, uh, customer experience for things like uh, uh, um, uh, IVR, you know, uh, IDMV, product onboarding, releasing new products, uh, uh, um, and so forth. So we, we have loads and loads of data that we use with lots of organizations and we use some of that. And uh, um, you know, I think the model used to be very much uh, uh, um, um, either do it yourself um, or get a, a big organization to do it for you. So the DIY uh, uh, or the DF or the DFY, we very much think it's DWY, uh, which is do it with you. And the reason we do that is that we don't pretend to know your business better than you. 
Um, however, we do have lots of insight and critical thinking to bring from elsewhere. And we also think it's very, very difficult for you to read the label on the outside of the jar when you're standing inside it. So another takeaway would be, you know, uh, use use uh, 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 um, partners uh, uh, wherever you can, especially if they have particular expertise, because actually that's what you're paying for. That's what that's the premium that you're paying your your partners for is actually solving that problem um, with the intelligence that they have that they've captured for a number of years. Um, yeah, this this stuff doesn't have to take weeks and weeks. You know, gone are the times where you have large uh, uh, um, uh, presentations and, and strategies that have been developed. I was uh, lucky or unlucky and, uh, uh, um, enough to work for uh, the London Underground for a while as a consultant, uh, uh, um, external uh, independent consultant doing doing assurance for the uh, financial director who ran IT. And I can remember clearly she she took a strategy that was written uh, um, by a well-known uh, organization and she threw it straight in the bin and she just said, I can't believe you spent eight weeks developing a, um, a strategy that this organization will never be a, able to execute. So we make sure that, you know, when we develop this thinking, it's appropriate, it's quick, it's agile, it's lean, uh, um, and it will fit into your organization. Um, uh, um, uh, so again, you know, if you've got some partners or if you need them, you know, you should you should always look with them. We try to leave things behind uh, 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 and wherever possible. Uh, um, so uh, you know, please uh, pl pl please take that as another takeaway. Um, something else that uh, 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 um, we typically uh, 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 look to do is to is to help organisations build a process and framework. For delivering stuff themselves okay so we we quickly understand and we take a business challenge uh, um, and we understand that process and everything that happens prior to that process within or during the process and post that process to make sure that we have everything that we need and again what we do is we collate all the information very quickly uh, and we then have to connect the information um, and understand where it fits in and how it relates to um, other systems or other processes or other customers or or any of the dependencies that you may have to make sure that we've understood all the gaps, uh, all the assumptions, all the uh, 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 interdependencies uh, 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 and so forth. Um, then we start looking at uh, the transformation on how we synthesize off the back of that to make something more intelligible and bigger than all the issues and challenges that we had before to really uh, 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 move things forward. And we do this again uh, uh, um, in, in a quick agile way by using workshops, getting people and representatives, subject matter experts into a workshop. Uh, um, and that probably takes two, two or three hours to collate all the information and start looking at those candidates. We then look at a strategy where we start connecting uh, um, to your architecture, your platform, any other uh, information flows and so forth. Um, and then we start looking at the prototyping. So these things can take a, a number of days, not, not weeks. And uh, uh, um, then we start looking at the design, uh, the design sprints and the product sprints for how you can take this out and roll it out, making sure that we've taken uh, the prior, during and post process subroutines into, a, into account. Um, so what, what is an output? What is a framework? What is the mindset uh, um, and tools that we're trying to we're trying to use? Um, we take them through this process and you'll you'll see, you know, quite quickly, as I mentioned earlier about uh, a, a big gymnasium organization, they wanted to automate this IDMV thing. So what we had to very quickly do was come up with a scope that we could all agree, come up with a success criteria that everybody uh, was bought into. Uh, uh, and we had to make sure that we got a decider on the team. So this team was, uh, you know, these things can be, lit, you know, really, really agile. We're talking about three, four, five people, but the mentality and the approach was making sure that we got the people that are the right people to do this. And uh, the truth of the matter with all these different transform transforming things is some of the people that you need to deliver this are some of the people that are the busiest in your organization, but uh, 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 um, needs needs must where, where the challenges and business problems are as big as they have been over the last few months. So we got what we wanted. We agreed a, uh, um, a scope. Uh, we agreed a... Uh, uh, um, 
uh, statement of works uh, um, and uh, success, success, with a success criteria. So we could build out the designs, but and we, and we, pro we proved it within a couple of days. Uh, um, everybody was happy. Uh, um, and then we started looking at that uh, productization. So how we could take it, this particular proof of concept was just taking a, a few hundred uh, uh, um, per day. Um, um, and now we've got thousands and thousands every morning uh, um, of, of, of these interactions have been automated and sent through to the MyTel contact center. So you need to make sure, uh, and we've got a 15 step process to do this. Um, we assign owners, uh, uh, um, um, yes, these things do cost money, but actually you're, you're spending on money uh, um, on things that have got a proven ROI. So typically uh, um, it's a lot easier to uh, uh, create a mandate moving forward. Um, Back to the motor racing, uh, uh, um, as you can tell, uh, uh, um, I uh, like motor racing and cars, hence uh, we're always down at, at Mercedes World. Um, but uh, this is actually from Le Mans, I thought, since we can't uh, go and look at nice cars, I will bring some nice cars uh, to you guys. So uh, uh, um, uh, that's what I did here. I've used a few few, few picks, but uh, um, uh, um, you need to understand before you start some of this approach, things that can slow you down, okay? Uh, 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 um, things that uh, uh, um, you need to take account of uh, all the time. And one of them I mentioned earlier is silos. Um, you can look at this picture and you could say, uh, uh, this guy's working on his own, what's he gonna do? Is he gonna hand this car over uh, um, you know, to the driver next? How's it gonna work? Is he working in a silo? Uh, uh, in this instance, he wasn't. These guys at the, uh, in racing have got uh, got it down to a T. They're they're just focused, and I think focus is something that uh, uh, um, we we really must be better at. Um, organizations, it seems to me, still have silos. We still throw stuff over uh, to the customer services team who thrust you know, uh, 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 um, and if pressured enough, they will start throwing some of that uh, um, back to customers. Uh, um, whereas actually, if we're wanting to uh, build build a, um, a, a light framework uh, where we can all achieve something quickly, we need to get, we need to pull down the walls. The silos are evil, we need to get rid of them. Um, uh, and, uh, um, you know, silos, uh, just think of it as, as COVID in slow motion, that's what silos are. You have them all the time. We all hate COVID, we want it to go. Uh, uh, um, but actually we should start thinking of uh, as silos as COVID because actually it's breaking, it's stopping you uh, um, innovate, um, it's stopping you making decisions. Uh, uh, um, all it does is, is allow people to operate uh, um, on their own. They think they're empowered when actually they're the reverse. Um, so what I like to look at is, is what will actually make it succeed. Uh, uh, um, uh, start looking at the, you know, what's winning, the mentality. Uh, um, uh, we like to work with your organization because nobody knows your business better than you. What we try to do is facilitate those things coming out in a smooth, categorized, prioritized way. Um, so, you know, uh, um, some of the things that we would like to see people do more of is engage your team. Um, in, you know, select an inspiration for doing something, understand that inspiration end to end. You know, you can then hypothesize and ideate. Um, select a candidate solution, test, verify, uh, uh, um, and by doing successful, what it allows you to do is create um, an ongoing mandate within your organization. And then things like budgets become easier, uh, decision making comes easier. Um, you know, uh, I think, you know, with things like to see another quick takeaway for your decision making, the facts are that if you make no decision uh, um, um, within, within uh, um, a certain period of time, you're in a worse state than if you'd made the wrong decision. So actually having that uh, 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 mandate and protocol, as we talked earlier, is only going to help you. So we need to we, we, we need to start making decisions about doing something and changing our organization. Um, so to uh, uh, finish up, another car. Not everything seems is what it seems. And actually, this car uh, looks like an old car. Uh, uh, um, um, but let's not get stuck up on old technology, old cars. Um, it's actually a, a brand new car, which probably goes against what I'm about to say. But uh, uh, um, uh, uh, it, just to show you, don't be fooled on the outside. Um, there are no excuses. You don't need to worry about uh, the tools uh, uh, um, that you currently have. 
um, there are many, many hows that can get around aging technology or uh, what we call uh, uh, um, uh, big systems of record uh, uh, that are monolithic. Um, there are ways around that. We build front ends to the back end, back ends to the front end. Uh, we build uh, uh, digital wrappers. Uh, we build digital records uh, to move away from CRMs and all sorts of different integrations. So let's not worry about the how. What we need to worry about are uh, uh, um, moving forward. Um, you know, what we need to do, are we need to inspire the interested and help the unaware to make sure that we can move things forward. Um, if we can give people enough faith and confidence that this is working, uh, and we can then build an open-minded team that uh, uh, um, uh, will do wondrous things and engage with uh, uh, many partners um, and internal partners to deliver um, innovation in a, in a quick uh, uh, um, and agile way, uh, and I'm sure at low cost, um, making you uh, uh, less interchangeable with your customers and making you more uh, uh, um, uh, have a greater ability to actually add new products and services that may be your own or others and, uh, and actually innovate your business models as well as your organizations. So I think you know the biggest takeaway from this uh, uh, for me is give it a go. Uh, uh, and whether you've got people that can help you or not, uh, uh, you can find them. Um, um, if you've got people internally want, that want to be trained up, you can get them trained up. If you've got technology or not that are allowed to do this, you can get technology to do this. So uh, uh, um, uh, we're big uh, uh, um, advocates of doing something, experimenting uh, um, and validating. So that's all I had to say, you know, based on, on, on uh, lots of customers where we can prove this model works uh, um, in, a, in a flexible, uh, in a, a cost efficient, cost uh, and process uh, effective way. Jonathan, over to you. Thank you, Alex. Uh, great insights. If you can turn the, uh stop sharing the slides that would be great uh, so i think um for me it's uh, we, we we live in a very very fast uh, uh paced uh, changing world and uh, as we know and we've heard about many times before um you know unfortunately the the, the, the pandemic covid uh, has has thrust uh, uh greater change upon us and the speed of uh, transformation uh, has been incredibly rapid um Couple of points there. I think very, very interesting, uh, Alex, and important to pick up on the the equal measures, the the thinking and the doing. Uh, absolutely critical to understand uh, uh, the why and uh, what you're trying to achieve, the problems you're trying to solve, uh, and then it is about the doing. You know, don't be afraid uh, to get started. Uh, you know, we've worked very successfully together uh, since the last summit, right? You know, it's uh, a lot of projects that we've uh, delivered together, a lot of change programs that we've helped uh, customers with. And I think for me, the, um, you know, a good good term to sum this up is innovation without execution is just ideation. It, it's just ideas, right? So if we want to see the true benefit that can be achieved for our businesses, for our customers and, uh, and for our colleagues, we need to get started. We need to embrace this stuff. So, you know, some, some really good insights and, and suggestions. Thank you. Um, so just having a look, if, uh, if we've got some uh, uh, questions, please pop them up into the uh, into the chat. Um, I'll pick up the first uh, one that I can see there. And uh, if you've got any others, please keep going. So I'll read this out for you, Alex. Uh, have you got any examples of your 15-step process? Keen to understand how you go about building your framework into a large organization and how many processes and outmoded projects and your planning, such as Waterfall. Yeah, so we've got many um, examples where we've, where we've used this framework and some of this framework has actually been left uh, uh, in many organizations, some of which have been uh, governmental bodies. I think Amy told us quite a lot about those earlier. Uh, um, so yes, uh, uh, we've got many examples that we can share. I would, uh, uh, and potentially can introduce people. We've also just done a uh, um, uh, an industry uh, uh, um, leader for the uh, motor motoring um, organisation. Again, uh, we, it's been uh, well received. So, uh, you know, uh, um, we, we, we've also applied some of these tools actually into organisations that are waterfall 
uh, as in big uh, tier one construction companies. And uh, that, that did provide some challenges because they're so used to, uh, you know, 6,000 lines on a Microsoft project. Uh, um, and they kept saying, well, how do, how do we use this? We can't, uh, we can't build before we've done foundations. And I said, well, I don't think you actually need to apply it to your foundations. Uh, um, that's a different process. But yes, uh, happy to share some frameworks uh, that we have and happy to talk to any organizations on, on how we can help them. Okay, Christian, we can uh, pick this up uh, later and you know happily arrange uh, uh, an introduction. Uh, question from Amy. So what tools do you use to persuade organizations to spend enough time to understand the problem they're trying to solve when often investment comes with unre unrealistic expectations of immediate results? Tools. Well, I, I, we... We actually, we actually, you know, um, we use we use the people themselves. So when we're capturing uh, business challenges and problems, we we cat we facilitate and we have things called scribes where they write stuff down and all sorts of things. But we actually allow them to come. We facilitate them to come to some of the answers themselves. And once we've connected uh, uh, um, all the issues they're having, so they can actually understand them in the round and uh, and in the at their entirety, they do actually start coming to uh, uh, um, uh, um, that some of those answers themselves. We do see ourselves as, as facilitators in them solutioneering uh, uh, themselves. You know, it can be anything from, uh, um, you, know, my, my, how, you know, we're having uh, issues with our uh, um, environment because people have been noisy in the customer services team we're trying to do, blah, blah, blah. You can come up with loads of solutions yourself by facilitating properly and asking them, would this work, would that work? Have you thought about this? And so forth. So we do actually use them themselves as tools. So I think actually experience and expertise cannot be um, undone here. And again, as I talked about the pattern matching there, uh, and because we've been to so many organizations where we've done things now, uh, uh, we do bring some of those uh, uh, um, inspirations uh, in their own right with us and actually push those back. Would it work if? Uh, uh, um, uh, I think it's uh, Procter & Gamble have this, This uh, uh, they coined the phrase um, HMW, HMW. It's called the how might we? And uh, how might we solve this? How might we do that? And they they, they build it into their, their management team. So we do that ourselves as well. We try and take, you know, some of these uh, uh, leading uh, um, small tools and techniques to be able to uh, take people through to an approach where they're uh, uh, more comfortable getting that management buy-in. Um, you know, we, we've had to do this with uh, utilities, with heavy union, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, input, and uh, you know, uh, um, you know, we had to get away from some of the issues of um, are you doing a, a, a time recording, time and motion studies, blah blah blah, and uh, we weren't. We had to very much show them where we are. Uh, solving that problem and I think uh, you know certainly a, a takeaway from from me from working uh, closely with Alex over over the last year on a number of uh, customer projects is you know yes definitely it's important to understand it's important to identify the problem that we want to solve when, when we're looking at the problem and the outcome it becomes a lot easier to underpin that with uh, with technology uh, and certainly what we've uh, been doing is uh, uh, you know, the, 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 there's a number of common components uh, uh, that we have that, that has actually helped us to accelerate some of the value that we've delivered to clients. So, uh, you know, to be in a position where uh, we had a, a conversation with a customer uh, and the first uh, demonstration to actually having a, a live system uh, where we started to deliver some results uh, within five days, the, the Craig David solution, I've been told now. Um, but, uh, you know, to be able to deliver that level of value in, in that short space of time is testament to not just the capability of the thinking, but a lot of the uh, uh, the investments in the technology, the components and, uh, uh, and, 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 and the platforms to be able to support customers. For sure. And if you do, if we really do, get the thinking right, the doing does become so much easier because yeah. unrealistic thinking uh, 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 um, and expectations, as Amy's put, it uh, does happen all the time, especially in IT projects. We all know about it. We hear it all the time. Yeah, actually, with the right mindset uh, and the right thinking, you can deliver stuff quite quickly. You do need to, like like Agile, MVP, you've got to be very clear. Again, that comes down to some of the communication. You need to you need to box things up. You need to say, this is success criteria. This has got design life like anything else. 
you know, if it's a prototype or it's an MVP, uh, um, you know, we've designed it for a life that suggests it will do 20,000 transactions per minute, blah, blah, blah. So when you're doing 80,000, expect to spend more, some more investment on it. And I think, uh, um, you know, this isn't, uh, if you treat this as a pet, uh, 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 um, you know, um, more than treating it as a, a, a cow in a field, uh, you'll have better you'll have better outcomes. You know, a, a cow in a field, you might at best, if it if it snows, have to throw some hay out there and you can leave it alone. Whereas a pet does need watering. It does need feeding. It does need to fling. And uh, they're some of the things that uh, um, need to be, uh, uh, and we're very, very uh, clear and vocal with, with organizations that want to go on this uh, 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 and be ready for this. But it does allow you to do things that waterfall won't do, that allow you to do. So again, I think you know, we, 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 we've run out of time, but I think... Uh, uh, looking at this as an, an investment and an asset to help to support the business moving forward. So, look, it's you know really interesting. I, I know we could talk about this subject uh, uh, for a lot longer. Uh, unfortunately, we've come to the end. So, you know, please, if if it's piqued your interest, uh, there's a lot of capability here. We'd love to uh, carry on conversation. So, Alex, thank you very much.